do that again. Good evening, everyone. By now you know that I'm Dr. Ward. I am the very proud principal of Marshwood High School. I'd like to welcome all of you here this evening for this very important night. By now, some of you may be questioning, questioning whether or not I am sane or insane. Well, let me clue you in. I've been insane for 25 years of education, so that's not going to change. We're going to uh, have a very nice ceremony tonight. We may get a little wet, but that's okay. We're going to follow the ceremony, and we're going to have a good time regardless. So let's move on with it. I'd like to invite the class salutatorium, Adam Straub, to do an honor essay. Thank you very much, Dr. Ward. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming out here in this questionable weather. I hope we can get to the end of this without any serious trouble. When I learned that I was going to give a speech at graduation, I was both excited and scared. I've never given a speech before, and I really didn't know how to do anyone. I talked to a lot of people, asking for advice on what I should do. I was surprised with how much people had to say. Many responses droned on for more than half an hour. <laughs> Everyone advised different things, but there was one piece of common ground among all of my lengthy responses. Don't talk too long. <laughs> so I didn't need to write a long speech, but I still needed to write something. I wanted to write something of import, something wise, but seeing that I still go running to my parents whenever life throws a curveball at me, I figured I should leave wisdom to someone else. I decided to borrow from someone who has been around for more than 80 years, a great man by the name of Kurt Vonnegut. One of his quotes has struck me with its bluntness, simplicity, and genuine truthfulness. In it, he talks about the rules we follow as we live our lives. Before I share this quote, I want to talk a little about the rules I have seen my classmates and I follow in these past 17 years. Seven years ago, at about this time, this class met for the first time at step-up day for sixth grade. After the initial shock of Elliot and South Borough students coexisting at one school, we organized ourselves into integrated groups of friends. Junior high was a time of great social turbulence and turmoil. Who and what was cool changed by the week, and students changed themselves almost as quickly, looking for an identity that pleased them. By the time we hit high school, everyone knew their role in the martial society. The football players and the gossip queens knew who they were. The cheerleaders were a close-knit group, and the punks, skaters, and wallflowers were set in their ways. With each of these roles came a set of rules telling us how to play our part. With each of these roles, sorry, <laughs> these roles tell us what to wear, what to do, who to talk to, who to make fun of, and who to respect. As most of you know, I myself have held steadfastly to the ever so popular role of the geek. <laughs> I would feel naked without a calculator in my pocket and a book in my hand. A brave few of us did not follow these strict rules. Renee Leopold, a creative artist of incredible talent, joined me and my fellow geeks in the Calculus Olympics. Nigel Robinson, class treasurer and drama enthusiast, performed with a female-dominated color guard. Perhaps the bravest of all was a good friend of mine, John Wisby who after changing in the varsity locker room after the football game, snuck warily across the school to meet with Mr. Bronte and the math team. Aside from these and a few other inspiring exceptions, we have all strictly followed a fixed set of social rules and regulations. 
As graduation grew closer, these rules had begun to fade away. I think we all realize that after today, our roles and reputations will disappear. From now on, we will be seen as who we are, not the stereotypes we tried to represent. These last weeks and months have been incredible fun, for as the rules have fallen away, the class has become closer and friendlier. When I pass someone in the hall, it is no longer a geek passing a football player, but sees one senior amiably greeting another senior. As we, the class, have developed a strong sense of community, I have truly enjoyed the camaraderie. After today, we will enter a world where no one will know our reputation. We will be free to act however we please, free of any of the social constraints we have created for ourselves four years ago. Rather than develop a new set of updated rules and regulations to follow, I have decided to adopt one singular and simple rule that neither binds nor restrains. And I asked my classmates to consider the same. I found this rule in a book by Kurt Vonnegut titled God Bless You, Mr. Rosewater. In it, the main character, Mr. Rosewater, speaks to the newborn babies of his hometown. Welcome to Earth, babies. It's cold and wet and crowded. At the outside, we've got about a hundred years here. There's only one rule I know. God damn it, you've got to be kind. That certainly makes a lot of sense to me. You can write a book of laws, you can follow the Ten Commandments, you can read the Bible, Torah, or the Koran. It all boils down to that one simple rule. You've got to be kind. If there's anything we've all learned in our four years at Marshwood, I'd like to think it is how to work with people, how to make friends, and how to keep friends. You can do anything with kindness. Without it, you can't do anything at all. Well, everyone told me to keep the speech short, and I've probably rambled on far too much already. Seniors, be good wherever you go. Have fun. Don't forget about all the geeks and football players here in Marshwood. And above all, be kind. Let's get this graduation underway. from 
the chair of our board of directors. She will distribute uh, some book, award, book awards that we give annually to students, but also she will have an opportunity to speak to the class of 2002. And before she does, I, on uh, behalf of my staff and students, I would like to sincerely not only thank her, but our board of directors, because they certainly are champions for education. This is Helene Cash. Good evening. On behalf of the Board of Directors of Maine School Administrative District 35, I would like to welcome you to the graduation ceremony of the Marshwood High School Class of 2002. Tonight, I welcome you to a celebration of community. I am proud to represent the, uh, that educational community, and I'm particularly honored to represent the members of your school board tonight as their chairperson. Therefore, I would like to take a moment to recognize the five community members who serve with me. They serve with commitment, intelligence, and seemingly unlimited time and energy. They are mindful of the concerns of the residents of our town, and most importantly, they are strong and unfailing advocates for the students of South Berwick and Elliott. I would like to introduce each member, and I would kindly ask you to hold your applause until the end. Mr. Terry Malloy, our board vice chair. Dr. Bill Gilbert, who could not be with us this evening. Mrs. Ellen Breed. Mrs. Jane Robbins and Mrs. Sue Fuller. The first time I addressed the graduating class at Marshwood High School was eight years ago. At that time, I did not have a close relationship with any of the graduates. I remember looking out at the young men and women and imagining them as first graders and as junior high school students and as a freshman in high school. I watched the faces of their parents and friends and family members. I watched tears mingle with smiles. I felt the pain of a life passage and I cried through the entire ceremony. Tonight, I know most of the graduates, whether it's young children, watching them from afar, volunteering in their classrooms, or as friends of my son, friends who spent many hours in my home and became part of our extended family. And so if my emotions overflow, please understand that they are born of the bittersweet nature of this rite of passage. When I was elected to serve on the school board, my son Blake was in second grade. I stand here tonight with great pride as he graduates with the Marshwood High School class of 2002. One of the reasons I sought to serve on the Board of Directors was because of my strong feeling, then and now, that parents deserve a place at the educational table. For that reason, I ask that you indulge me this evening by allowing me to step back from my role as board chair and to speak to you from my heart as a parent. I must begin with our teachers. Thank you. Thank you to the Central School and the Elementary Elliott Elementary School teachers for caring for our children, for teaching them to read and to write, and instilling in them a love of learning. Thank you to our junior high school teachers for teaching our children tolerance, respect, a sense of community, and preparing them for high school. And finally, to the outstanding faculty of Marshwood High School, you have guided our children on their journey from childhood to adulthood. You have taught this remarkable and talented class of graduates well, and you have cared about them as individuals. Their achievements are in great part also your achievements. Every graduate here tonight has had a teacher, or perhaps many teachers, who made a difference in their life. And so as a parent, I would like to thank every teacher in this district every teacher who encouraged the student, who challenged the student, who inspired the student, who spent extra time with the student, who laughed with the student. In short, 
every teacher who gave a part of themselves. And as parents, we recognize that what we are giving our children is priceless.
Mapping the Secrets of the Universe, Origins of Life, and the Future of the Human Race by John Maddox. Awarded to Justin Clark. Fine Art, Churches by Judith Dupree. Awarded to Renee Leifold. Social Studies, The Years of Lyndon Johnson, Master of the Senate, by Robert A. Caro, awarded to Reed McHenry. English, London, The Biography, by Peter Ackroyd, awarded to Emily Sheffield. Five Equations That Changed the World, The Power and Poetry of Mathematics, by Michael Gillen, Ph.D., and The Beautiful Mind, by Sylvia Nasser, awarded to Sarah Becker and Stephen Dawson. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2002. We wish you much success and great Okay. Uh, I'm sure some of you have noticed the breeze picked up a little bit. And seeing how it was raining very heavily in Boston uh, just a little more than an hour ago. We are going to move some things around. We'll still try to do our whole program. However, uh, the most important thing we want to do this evening is the presentation of diplomas. So we're going to move that up and, and start that program. Before we present to the students, we have some very special guests with us this evening. They are seated to my left in between the students and the stage. These are all veterans of the Korean War, and we'd like to recognize these three gentlemen as, and honor them as they all went off to defend our country and fight in this war and were unable to uh, complete their high school education uh, at that time for a high school diploma. So we're very pleased we're going to be able to honor them today by presenting them with a Marshwood High School Diploma.
This is a very special evening for this gentleman as he has two grandchildren graduating. Would Eric Furbush and Megan Goodwin please stand while your grandfather receives his diploma? Corey 
is Michael Gray. Brandon 
Adam Levin. Cody Christopher Lightfoot. Megan Colleen Walpy. Jeffrey Harold Berg. Jill Elaine Pitney. John Stephen O'Malley. Stephen P. Duran. Kathleen Lynn Messier. Amanda Catherine Leaf. Kristen 
Christina Lee Dion. Christopher Richard Metcalf. Jason Warren Vitalia. Richard Benjamin Fogarty.
You notice that we have uh, guests come up to the stage to present diplomas to students. Those are board member parents and faculty parents presenting to their senior children, just so you're aware of that. Uh, all together now. Uh,
James Marchese. Christopher Dana. Gregory Mark Proto. Christopher Nelson Warren, Jr. Nathaniel Pyra Brisson. Jeremy Durrell. Jasmine Ann Seaball. Rock Michael Glidden. Randy Francis Pickering. Benjamin Robert Whistle. Daniel Talbert. Mike Fielder. Kevin Kuna.
Timothy Michael Vaughn. Travis C. Pratt. Stephanie Ann Locke. Stacy Ray Ross. Diane Amber Mason. Stephen Lord George Filio. Jacqueline Emily Bodette. Sarah Jean Thurber. Mark Joseph Stevens Jr. Jessica Marie Cassidy. Nicholas Alexander Jordan.
Michaela Aaron White. Lindsay Aaron White. Leanne Marie Flanagan. Kevin Donald Martell. Casey Wayne Allen. Jennifer Marie Brooks. Sarah Marie Harvey. Maria Alexandra Costello. Rachel Sarah White. Nicholas Paul Hale. Skylar Letourneau. Kathleen Laura Elizabeth Brown. Jeffrey Wolf.
And then we remember our high school days. All of the teachers, classes, sports teams, and clubs. We recall learning to drive as the instructor vigorously pumped the brake pedal from the passenger side. We smile to remember the day we could proudly present our IDs at the movie theater and no longer had to sneak into R-rated movies. We painfully think of but we painfully think of how spark notes could only carry us so far and couldn't always get us to school the day that killer paper was due. Junior prom and the senior banquet hold special memories for each of us. Above all, we remember the times we shared with friends and family over the years. All of this reminiscing means something. Here we are at graduation, which so many high school students see as the goal. However, what is behind this day is more important and more memorable than graduation itself. Some of the best advice I have ever received was given to me, given to me by my coach on the Seacoast Swimming Association, Mike Parado. He said to me, Enjoy the day-to-day -day experiences you have, and don't simply focus on your final goal. When you look back on your past, you will remember the process of reaching that goal, rather than the singular achievement that came at the end. I am now beginning to understand just how true that advice really is. For example, when I look at my driver's license, the common goal of most 16-year-olds, I remember the hours upon hours I spent driving with my parents. I recall driving all around South Berwick in preparation for my test. Most of all, I think of, this, I think of the day of my first driving test when, despite my hours of practice, I nearly hit a pedestrian in a crosswalk and had to start practicing all over again. The process that went into getting my license is more memorable than the actual moment I was handed that little slip of paper. Plus, it makes for a good story. The same is true for this day. All of the memories we have been thinking of are the day-to-day -day experiences we have had over the years, the process of growing older. We have seen and felt many changes as time has led us to this day. Those experiences are what is important in life, the times we have together that are so poignant we remember them years later. There have been lots of good times that we need to keep with us. I thank you for the experiences I have had. Wherever you go and whatever you do, I wish you all luck in making memories for yourselves in years to come.
to have the opportunity to make this final farewell to Marsha's class of 2002. Um, honored and empowered, Emily. Honored and empowered? Well, we feel honored to have been asked to make this address at such a momentous occasion. And empowered? And an empowered because right now we are the only thing standing between graduates and our flying cats. <laughs> some of you may be thinking, oh please don't stop talking, I don't want high school to end. And the other 99.9% .9 of you are wondering when we'll get to the point so we can graduate. We agree. We agree with both views, and since the weather seems to want us to move along, uh, but we feel that though the excitement to end high school is building, and the images of college and working life consume many of our thoughts. It, this is a time when we should take a moment to reflect on the growth and maturation we've all experienced over the past four years. None of us would have reached this milestone in our lives if it were not for our loving parents and family members. It is hard to find words to express our gratitude, and it is even more difficult to say goodbye. After today, we will no longer be your little school children. Because, let's face it, no longer are most of us little, nor are we children. Well, most of us, that is. One thing that remains true is that we will always be yours, and we wouldn't have it any other way. It would be unrealistic to say that we never fought or hurt each other's feelings, but our love for you has never wavered. We would like to extend our most sincere thanks to all the family, to mom, to dad, step-parents, aunts, uncles, sisters and brothers, friends who opened their homes and often their refrigerators to us over the last 15 years. Thank you to the parents for being our number one sports and music fans, for believing in us, perhaps when we didn't believe in ourselves. Thank you for looking past the goth makeup, the baggy jeans, the eye rolls, and loving us unconditionally, nose rings and all. Thank you for instilling in us your wisdom and your advice, and for reminding us that although we are not invincible, we can conquer the world. Thank you for waking up to late night or early morning phone calls, for the endless loans of money and car rides, and thank you ahead of time for helping us with the overabundance of laundry it is only inevitable many of us will bring home from college. Thank you to the older brothers and sisters for preparing us for high school and showing how, how to be cool. Thank you for reminding us that no matter how hard we try, we will never be as cool as you. <laughs> Thank you for putting the rest in our hair and teaching us choreographed dances. <laughs> for helping us with papers you remembered writing. Thank you for dressing us up like dolls. <laughs> Maybe that was just my sister. Thank you. <laughs> but in all seriousness, the love and support that you have shown us is something that we will always remember. Thank you to Marsha's faculty and staff for the fun and light times in the classroom. We students will never forget the variety of personalities we encountered throughout our education. Thank you to the teachers and volunteers whose support extended beyond the school walls. To those who chaperone dances, fundraise, or coach a team, you played a pivotal role in the success of the class you see before you. And so long and many thanks to the coaches and fans whose cheers of encouragement and optimism lifted us, lifted our spirits so many times during sporting events and band competitions. Saying goodbye is never an easy thing to do. And saying goodbye to a friend that you've known for the better part of your life seems unimaginable. In a few short months, many of us will be faced with this impending separation. How do you bid farewell to the people with whom you share so much? Your laughter, your secrets, your fear, your happiness, your tears, your food, clothes, and money. Well, you don't. The memories that you have together will stand the test of time and distance. And if the bond is, that you have created is one of a true and lasting friendship, the time you share will never leave you. When the day arrives in August or September, think of those shared moments. Celebrate the friendships you've created 
Look forward to those yet to be formed. In most graduation speeches, it's typical to quote a famous writer, singer, philosopher, or president. But Emily and I wanted to deviate from the norm and write our own words and wisdom. To lower your expectations from verbal grandeur, match. Nah. <laughs> Make your life one that will someday inspire and teach others. But most of all, make it a life that is uniquely your own. Alright, my turn. Which is very suiting at this point in time. If you hope there will be no rain, there still will be. <laughs> but if you can learn to dance in the rain, you'll still be wet, but at least you're getting your groove on. <laughs> Thank you. Class Marshals, what will happen 
from this point on, we will stand our seniors, we'll do the official turning of the tassels, we will march them out, they will march out onto the football field, and they will form a circle and toss their caps. At that time, you may come on the field to congratulate them, hug them, beat on them, whatever. <laughs> Okay, class marshal. You may now turn your tassel.
Patient, patient. 